everybody. This is Russ White with QLife Media. I'm here today with Mackenzie Claude and uh, Daniel Mahan from Envy uh, Models. And you're based here in Las Vegas? We, are, our mothership is based here in Las Vegas. We have a sister agency in Beverly Hills and uh, we're a satellite in New York. Awesome. So Mac, you have some news for us today. Yeah, I am very excited because after months of uh, trying to get this to happen, um, Daniel with Envy Agency um, has agreed to take me on as not only a male model, but as a drag queen model as well. And that is something that's actually have, has never been done before in Vegas. So Nebraska Thunderfuck is the first signed drag model in Las Vegas. And fuck that's, yeah, I'm very excited about that. All right. That's fantastic. Um, so how did you get your start in modeling? It's something that uh, it's always been a passion of mine, but I just never thought it was realist, a realistic passion growing up. Uh, I, well, obviously, you know that I grew up in foster care. And when I turned 18, my social worker was like, you find a job and you hold on to that job and don't leave it. And so that's what I did. And it wasn't until I was in my 20s that I decided that I wanted to do something for myself and see about making modeling happen. So I ended up in Vegas and um, it all kind of just fell into place. And uh, as a male model in Vegas, I've been lucky enough to be on the cover of Q Vegas magazine, which was uh, Q Life before Q Life was Q Life. And um, it was my first magazine cover and it created kind of a domino effect for me which led to my billboard campaign with Piranha and then led to seven more magazine covers. So now I'm hoping to recreate that success, but as a drag queen, because it's something that's kind of new that's happening around the world with people like Miss Fame, who uh, just got signed to uh, Wilhelmina Models in New York and uh, to their women's division. So, these big things are happening around the world in the United States, and I'm so excited to cultivate a piece of that in Las Vegas. Daniel, why is this important for the industry? Well, I think for many uh, years, as things transpire and as the world grows, you know, there's been so much more, um, so much more dynamics that are thrown to an agency alone, whether it be representing, um, of course, all types of, of uh, talent, faces. And nowadays, especially since the, the growth with RuPaul's Drag Race and uh, the, the many a wonder of this world, it's really come about more and more, even on the breakdown for television and um, the theatrical division for film television, uh, runway shows, you'll see them in uh, Los Angeles Fashion Weeks and they're up you know, that they're always adding new dynamics to the shows, including drag queens, uh, uh, male models that will come out as a male model, then two seconds later come back out as a full on, you know, drag. And it's just <clears throat> being at the forefront of, an, uh, of this new wave, I guess, if you will. And I, I wouldn't even call it a new wave. I just think that it's sort of slightly always been there. It's just now, it's really coming more and more of a request. Uh, so, you know, just being at the forefront of the change, gotta be, gotta be ahead of that game, you know? <laughs> so how, how do you see this as, uh, is this a different path than the transgender models? Is this uh, an extension of it? How does, how does that, how does a drag queen model differ to, uh, in your request from a transgender model? Well, okay, so the, with the transgender model, of, um, I mean, they've more than likely had the full transformation or thereof or close to, so they have the added dynamics to their body. Um, but with a drag queen, uh, you know, you have a whole nother performance. You know, I feel like transgendered are more female and person you know impersonating at the time they're 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 becoming 
and, and the transformation of. Um, nowadays on film television level, you've got the request is no longer male or female. You actually have now the option of male, female, transgender. So I love the fact that we do represent this uh, for the agency. But then when you come to drag queen, I think you, you've just got certain fashion designers that want both. They want that sort of Amanda Lepore effect all the way to the, just the, the showmanship of a drag queen. And they, they design their line and costumes according to so. So you, they add them in their shows constantly. Uh, especially now more in days, especially on the West Coast. I love and New York does it a lot as well. So it's, it's just really wonderful to add them in. Why is this a That's milestone a for Vegas? I think, you know, Vegas for, for the agency, you know, as, as I share my time a globe, it's interesting how people always reflect Vegas kind of almost like such a third market. It's not really reverent, but ironically enough in retrospect, I've been at, the, at the, the forefront for the last 20 years here in Vegas, and I've seen it change in, by, over year over year at just incredible vast amounts. And so when you look at it, you've got New York, Miami, Rio de Janeiro, Paris, and then you'll see Vegas listed in there. So it's a, it's, it is a town that represents change, uh, lifestyle and we're on the map in a bigger way than I think people anticipated it to be. And so when these shows do come here as a fashion agency here in Las Vegas, you know, while everybody is gambling or they're doing their, their normal trek and, you know, I'm doing a show with Catherine Malandrino in a ballroom, but nobody knows it's really going on or Victoria's Secret, or I've done live shows with Dolce and Gabbana and this, the, it's such a dynamic a kind of underground world that you have here on the fashion level, but it is definitely substantial. It's, um, and because Vegas is such an incredible showmanship town, it's, it's, it's all about show. It's all about dynamics. It's all about that typical, what happens here stays here, uh, element. And, you know, with fashion, you got to be able to evolve with the times. And I think this is a new wave that's going to come through. Yeah, and uh, to piggyback off of that, uh, in my experience uh, with kind of some of the bookings I've received in the five years that I've been modeling in Vegas is that Vegas 3 and the, the type of work that's available for models. So this is really kind of pushing the boundaries uh, as far as the fashion uh, and modeling. Uh, boundaries are how, how um how long does it take a normal model to prep for a runway show and does a drag model have an even longer time or are they about the same i would say um every runway show that you're gonna watch the runway models backstage um, the fee let's just talk about the female element. There, there's hours of preparation for a female model, regardless from hair all the way to the makeup. So I think dynamically on the same side where a drag queen would be remotely about the same. Um, but I think the one element that Mackenzie does add is, um, and much like I've seen before, where he's such a, you know, handsome, male model alone, if you've, if you've reverted or ever seen his portfolio book, as a male alone, he shoots and has the, the dynamics there already. But then in two seconds, run backstage, throw some lipstick on, a quick lash and throw on that wig and come right back out and do something in drag. I think he, he reverenced that in a very quick change, just obviously when you look at him. Now, Mac, do you... Uh... Are you always in drag as Nebraska, or do you just do generic drag too? Will you just do generic drag modeling, or is Nebraska the headline signed model that you'll be uh, modeling as? RuPaul's really evolved my idea of what a supermodel means, because now I kind of view a supermodel as an individual who can possess any look, or any, evoke any mood, or uh, any gender. 
even. And so I think that it's important to be able to, I know as my character in Nebraska, I have the giant uh, porn titties, but I think that it's important to be able to do any look and uh, to also play it down um, in drag as well and not have the titties or uh, have smaller hair or whatever the shoot or the mood calls for to be able to emulate that. It's fantastic. I think it's going to be really exciting to see how this uh, evolves. Do we have anything upcoming for a Las Vegas shoot? Yes, I have a, a shoot that I'm doing next week with Tolga Katas, who's one of the biggest fashion photographers in this city. I'm sure Daniel's familiar with this work. Mm -hmm. Tolga, yep. uh, he shoots Holly Madison uh, and shoots uh, Camille Flawless. Anything else we want to add to this before we uh, say goodbye? <laughs> no, I just think that uh, as, as you know, Mackenzie being uh, a true dynamic and, a, and starting a new era, uh, uh, I think he's being um, at the forefront. I, I really appreciate that he, you know, we've, we've had long talks in depth about it and I can't wait to see uh, the, the bookings come along as he even transpires, his name grows. Uh, as we start getting his face more and more out there for not just Las Vegas, but, you know, the, the world to see. Wonderful. Well, we're, we're very excited. We're so happy to be a part of your history on this and uh, look forward to a, a bright future for you, Mac. Thanks, for, Thanks guys. I appreciate you.